Hi everybody, it's really great to welcome you to this next session of our Bible study series. I hope that you're well and I hope that you'll find this session really helpful. I would remind you that as we meet together in this way, it's really good if you can you know, pull up a chair and, and take a rest, take a sit. If you can grab your Bible, make yourself a, a cup of tea or coffee, get yourself a drink and have a notebook and pen there. This is about exploring together and I hope that you can engage with it in that way. And my prayer is that tonight, as we share this next session of the Bible study, I pray that God really will show us new things that we explore and find in his word. Today in this session, we're continuing to look at old Christian traditions and we're continuing to, you know, pray that God shines a fresh light on them and teaches, them, teaches us something new from them. And I pray that in this session, as we take a look at the social justice tradition, as we think about some of those traditions which have been in place for many, many years, we may even have been part of them. I pray that God will show us something new about how our faith can live, about how we can be renewed and we can continue to serve him and love him and grow in our faith with him and for him. So let's take a look at the social justice tradition. I wonder what images and uh, thoughts, what, which people or organisations or particular branches of the church first come to mind for you as we think about the social justice tradition. The social justice tradition is born out of people of faith, people of God, you know, people who love the Lord, who are not content to, to sit and pray, just pray for others. It's the people of God who over the years, over the centuries, have rolled up their sleeves, have uh, bent the knee, have bowed down in order to serve other people practically. It's about people who hunger to see God's heart of justice come to life and be delivered to those who need it most. Uh, there's a few examples for us to consider this evening, particularly within the Salvation Army. This is something that is really close to our hearts. So we will consider how we have responded as an organisation, as a movement of God over the years. But first of all, I want us just to bring to mind uh, St Francis of Assisi. In the late 12th century, Francis of Assisi and a group of God's followers, they decided to abandon their former lives, their, their former ways of worship. And they retreated to the Italian countryside where they sought to care very practically for the sick, for the poor and for the lame. Because of their decision, because of their, their movement of service, countless men and, will, men and women followed Francis' lead. And what happened was they formed the Franciscan and the Paul Clare orders of service. The impact that they had on disease and on poverty was absolutely remarkable. And they became just one example for us of the social justice movement. You see, it's people who love the Lord, who worship him, who pray and who serve him who feel called and moved to serve God by practically reaching out to those who are lost, those who are the last in society, those who are least. And that is really close to our hearts in the Salvation Army for it's what we have felt called to do and that's the corporate, the royal we, over the years. It was William Booth who, you know, felt so moved to serve others and to, you know, to give them soup because they were hungry and soap because they were dirty before he gave them the words of salvation and told them about the Lord. It's still today why we can be found across the world trying to reach out in social justice, trying to improve people's conditions in their life because we love the Lord, because we know he loves them. I wonder if you look at your own life of, of serving God, of worshipping him and living life for him, what kinds of acts of social justice have you been involved in? Maybe it's been something corporate and organised. Maybe it's something you've chosen to do quietly behind the scenes. Something you've tried to do for a neighbour or for the stranger on the street. I wonder what social justice you've been involved in. 
And so in this session, we're going to explore this social justice tradition and turn to our scriptures and study them together. As usual, we're going to follow the pattern where we're going to first of all, look at the life of Jesus. We're going to see how social justice uh, was seen in his ministry. There's so many beautiful examples of that. We're then once again going to take a look at wider scripture and wider teaching for God's people before we think about how that applies to our lives, before we take time to reflect and to pray on how that would become more and more part of our service and then think practically about some next steps, some suggestions, things that we can do to develop social justice in our service and in our faith. First of all then, let's look to Jesus. Let's look to his life and look at the place that social justice had. It's really clear to see that as Jesus was living on this earth, as he was carrying out his ministry, he had such a rich heart for those who were lost, for those who were last and for those who were least. He put them before many others. He put them before tradition. He put them before um, people's opinions and what people thought. And we're going to take a little look at how he engaged with those who were in need, how he engaged with them with compassion, but also with action. They are two clear things that we can see from the life of Jesus. First of all, then, let's look at how Jesus responded when he met those who were sick. The reality is there are so many passages, so many encounters that we could look at in Jesus' life, for we know that he encountered many, many people who were unwell. It was to the point where people were bringing their sick relatives, their sick friends to him, as well as him seeking them out and looking for them. We're going to look at just one of those examples just now, and it's found in Matthew's Gospel in chapter 14 and from verse 13. And what we find here is that, you know, even when Jesus, as it says here in verse 13, when Jesus heard what had happened, this was to John the Baptist, we find out here that he was in his own moments of grief, his own moments of loss. When he heard what had happened, he withdrew to a boat privately in a solitary place. We find that this is a time in Jesus' life where a lot's gone on for him personally. And so he goes and he takes time out. But even in that moment, when people had heard about this, it says the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. Now, when Jesus came to the shore and he saw the large crowds, he had compassion on them and he healed their sick. The reason I've chosen that one snapshot for us to consider in this session is that even when Jesus was going through so much himself, when he encountered those who were struggling, those who were in difficult times, still he had compassion on them. His actions of social justice weren't just for the times when he felt empowered for the times when he was a man on a mission. The reality was he was always a man on God's mission, even when he was in grief, even when he wanted that solitude and that private time. When he encountered them, it tells us clearly in verse 14. Firstly, he had compassion on them. And secondly, he healed their sick. I wonder how we can engage and support those who are vulnerable because of their health how we can ensure that we are people of compassion, but also people of action. That's a real challenge to us because Jesus tells us that in our day, in our times, we will see even greater things if we believe in him. Oh Lord, let us see you heal people today, I pray. As we continue to read this account and this passage, we find Jesus responding to another need. Not only those who are physically unwell, but very practically here, we see Jesus engaging with people who are hungry. This is a massive part of the church's ministry today. More and more uh, food banks and uh, food services are run by the local church, by people of faith. And here we see how Jesus responded to people in need. As we continue to read this, these verses, it goes on to say this. 
as evening approached, the disciples came to him and they said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and they can buy for themselves some food. But Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. As he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up into heaven, he gave thanks for them. He gave them to the disciples and then the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and they were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 baskets of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate were about 5,000 men besides their women and their children. Here what we see is that Jesus has, has had compassion on these people. He has performed miracles of healing. But this awareness of their human need for food comes to the forefront. And it's the disciples, his followers' first response to say, well, let's send them away now. You've had compassion on them. You've healed their sick. Let's send them away now. They can sort out their hunger. But Jesus, this man of action, this man of compassion says, no, you know, let's not send them away. Why don't you do it? He takes that responsibility for himself. He uses what's available around him and he makes a difference. He thanks God for what he's got. He shares what he's got. And of course, this miracle is performed. What we see is that as Jesus has acted out of compassion for these people, that everyone is satisfied. That everyone has, not maybe all they want, but all that they need. They have remained in fellowship together. And once again, God is glorified for people are amazed at his work. You see, this happens time and time again as Jesus encounters different people, the sick and the hungry. But we also see this when he encounters the sinful people, those who are labelled as the ones of sin, the ones of, of, you know, people who have wandered, people who have walked away. And it also happens when he meets the outcast. There's two other portions of scripture I want us to consider from Jesus' life. The first is from John's Gospel, from chapter 8, where we see this clear picture of how Jesus responds to someone who is found in sin. In John chapter 8, we find that, uh, you know, there is a surrounding gathered around a woman who has been caught in adultery. All those who are people who know and love God, all those who are people who seek to fulfill the law, are standing around her and they are accusing her. They are literally holding stones and ready to hurl them at her, for she has broken the law. She has sinned against God and against, you know, against them. And so they gather in order to take action, not action from compassion, but action from judgment. And Jesus steps in. Jesus decides because he has compassion on her that he will act, that he become, will become involved. And he challenges them. He asks them, you know, who here is without sin? Because that person who is here without sin, you can throw that stone first. As he has laid this challenge on those who are gathered, one by one they put down their stones because they realise they too are not without sin. Eventually, they are stood there and it's just the woman, the woman who has been caught in adultery, and it's Jesus. And what is said here is, Jesus straightens up and he asks her, woman, where are they? You know, where have they all gone? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she says. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declares. Now go and leave your life of sin. 
as he encounters this woman he has compassion for her he acts he intercedes he steps in and then he frees her he frees her not only from their actions and their response but he encourages her to go to live in that freedom but to live in freedom not only practically but spiritually to go and leave your life of sin that is social justice right there stepping into a situation and freeing people and sharing with them the freedom that we find not only in this world but in the next the final passage that I share with you this evening as we look at the life of Jesus is how he worked and and responded to the outcast that woman in many ways was yes a sinful woman but someone who was being outcast but another example for us here is found in Luke's gospel in chapter 19 in those first 10 verses those verses that will be familiar to us for they speak about the encounter that Jesus had with Zacchaeus the tax collector now Zacchaeus was a man who was in this industry of work work which gave him a bad reputation but not only was it his work that people didn't like he was also not an honorable man this is like the woman found in sin a man who was outcast because he wasn't honest he wasn't trustworthy people didn't like him and so when Jesus was coming his way and he longed to see Jesus many would have believed and would have felt that he was not welcome he was not worthy of the time and the contact and the conversation with Jesus but Zacchaeus was uh, so um, he so wanted to see Jesus that as we know from these familiar verses in Luke 19 he literally climbs the tree he's a small man and there's crowds gathered he climbs the tree so that he can see Jesus and Jesus could have easily passed him by he could have easily passed him by because he couldn't be bothered to talk to him or he was very busy gathered with crowds around him he didn't want to because he knew what kind of man he was but Jesus stopped he noticed he saw and he engaged he had that compassion and once again he took action he gave him time he gave him the gift of his presence and what amazed the crowd more and more is not only will this Jesus stop and engage and talk but Jesus is going to visit him Jesus wants time with him he's going to his house each one of these examples is a beautiful illustration and an example to us about social justice in our life it challenges us about compassion and it challenges us about our actions oh Lord help us to learn from the example of Jesus I pray and so having looked at the life of Jesus in, in some detail there and how he responded to those in need we take a step back and we look at this bigger picture of scripture together and consider what else it tells us in scripture I think the two things that are clear to me as I as I consider the rest of scripture is that God tells us time and time again that it is in his heart to love people it is his heart to love them he has a heart of compassion God is a God of love and what we find is that this love is so vast and so big that it is also a love of action there's verses I want us to consider from Isaiah just now Isaiah chapter 61 which are verses we hear echoed in the life of Jesus but they teach us something about the heart of God Isaiah 61 those first verses says this the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim good news the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness the prisoners 
to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God and to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve and and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair those verses capture for us the very mission of God the very heart of compassion and the heart of action that sends people into the world in order to give that freedom that action because of that love as we read on in those verses in verse 8 it says you know why this is for I the Lord love justice I love justice, I hate robbery and I hate wrongdoing. In my faithfulness I will reward my people and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. You see what we see in wider scripture is that God's heart is one of compassion and one of action, one that loves justice. And what God does is he calls his people to have a heart like him. He calls us to love like him, to have that compassion and to choose that action. Another of the prophets, Micah, says in chapter 6 and verse 8, that he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what is it that the Lord requires of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. You see, God's heart is so great that God God calls God's people to live like he does, to act justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. There's an extra couple of verses there which you can take a look at if you like in Proverbs chapter 14 and in Psalm 82, where God calls us to be people who have God's heart and to have compassion, but then to act. It's an amazing challenge before us, isn't it, as God's people to seek to live out and to share God's heart. What a challenge that is for us in our everyday lives. I wonder what your thoughts are on then, you know, what does that mean for us? How can we live that out? What does that look like for me? As we consider about our response and you know what that means for us there's just two further passages of scripture I, I bring to you today to share with you and they're verses which they continue to emphasize this compassion and this action but they also challenge us about motivation and about attitude because they are things that are so important for us as we think about how we you know apply social justice to our life to our living the first verses that I share with you is this, you know, the greatest commandments of all the many laws that the Bible talks about, of the many rules and the regulations of the old law and of this new covenant. You know, people often wonder, you know, what's the most important? What's, what's the most necessary for me to be part of God's kingdom? And in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22, we find, you know, people asking Jesus this. And Jesus tells them, you know, really clearly that the greatest commandment of all is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. And that that's closely followed by the second and that's loving your neighbour as yourself. The essence of our faith really is about, you know, having that love for God and that love for God's people, which is all people. You know, who is your neighbour? It's, it's everyone. The challenge for us is, you know, that, that God calls us to love him and have that compassion, but he calls us to love other people too and to act in ways that show it that love, to act in ways that give that freedom, that release the, those that are bound up and blinded and, and caught up in this life of sin and of difficulty from all different reasons. In Matthew's Gospel chapter 25, as we move on to the second one, what we see is that we are told really clearly that whatever we do for people, whatever we do for the last, the lost and the least, it's a way of loving God, it's a way of serving him. 
But the real challenge here is that we find we can serve the lost. We can serve the lost and we can go and reach out to the least and we can do it wrong. From that passage, we find that some people have done everything they, they should have done, but they've not done it right because they've not done it for God. They've done it for other reasons and they've already received their reward in full. They've done it so that people see and praise them. They've done it for the round of applause. They've done it for the awards and the recognition. They've not done it for God. And so what we find here is that we are challenged about our attitude and our motivation. God wants us to have that heart of compassion and God calls us to have that heart of action. But he calls us to do it not so that people see, not so that people applaud. He wants us to do it because we love him and because we love those people. He wants us to have that right spirit of motivation. He wants us to do it because we have that right attitude, that humility that only he sees and only he knows. And so I wonder, what can we do to reach out to those who need it most in society? What can we do for our family, for our friends, for those in our community, for our neighbourhood? How can we reach out to those who need it most? And how can we serve them in the right way? How can we do it with the right motivation and with the right attitude so that we honour God, so that we fulfil his heart and his life within us? Oh Lord, help us to do that, I pray. God is the God of justice. And Jesus is the one who came anointed by the Lord to bring freedom and release and healing. To take that, you know, pile of ashes and to anoint with this oil of joy. And as God's people in the world today, we too have that mission. Where we are men and women on a mission to share that heart of compassion, to share in that movement of action because of God's great love. And so I pray that today you and I will feel um, from this study a little bit of a fresh light and inspiration. And I pray that in these coming days and weeks that we will feel moved, not emotionally, not because we are just compelled to from a, a practical sense, but because we too are anointed by God's Spirit, that his Spirit is upon us too. And he moves us also to go and reach out to those who are lost, to those who are lost and those who are least. May the God of justice anoint you and I today so that we too are sent to be the people of justice in the world today. Let's reflect on that together before we share a word of prayer. God of justice Savior to all Came to rescue The weak and the poor Chose to serve And not be served Jesus You have called us Received now, freely we will get. We must go live to feed the hungry, stand beside the broken. We must go stepping forward, keep us from just singing, move us into action. We must go. Every day, loving mercy. 
see in every way Walking humbly before you And so, Father God, today I want to thank you for your heart of love and compassion and action. I thank you, Lord, for the life of Jesus, which gives us such clear examples on how we can live and serve you. Father, I pray that today you will give us compassion. I pray that today, Lord, you will help us to be bold and seek to turn that compassion into action. Show us, Lord, the people who need it most. Lead us to those for whom you want us to serve and to love. Help us, Lord, to do that with the right motivation and the right action. And please, Lord, help us to honour you as we seek to allow social justice to be lived out today in our faith and in our service. Father God, help us to do that this week and continue to use us and bless us, I pray as we reach out to others. I pray, Lord, that this week we will have opportunities to serve you in this way. And I pray, Lord, that not only will people's lives be changed, but I pray, Lord, that your kingdom will grow as more and more people get to learn and know your heart of love, your heart of compassion. I pray these things, Lord, in your beautiful name. Amen. I wonder what it is that we can do this week in order to live out that social justice. Here are three suggestions, three next steps that we can try if we want to engage with this action. The first is that we can seek to uphold justice in our conversations. Simply in the conversations you and I have, how can we uphold justice? How can we seek to protect people's reputations by refusing to take part in gossip or in backbiting? How can we speak up for people and help to guard others as well as our own heart and mind? Maybe this week we can seek to write to someone, to write to someone an encouraging letter, to show them that we have a heart of love and compassion for them. We're told in Proverbs verse 12 that anxiety wears down a human heart, but a good word can cheer it up. A letter of encouragement could make a difference to someone this week. It might be that we feel called to volunteer. Volunteering is a great avenue of service to others. Maybe we can practically seek to help a neighbour and a friend by offering to do something for them. 
You could explore by volunteering, maybe at the local food bank or at a local charity shop. I pray that in these next days and weeks, each of us, wherever we, we are, will find ways to reach out and to serve others. And as you do, I pray that you will know God's love for you, that you will know his freedom for you, and that each of us will find that oil of joy in serving him. I thank you for sharing in this session, and I pray that God will continue to bless you and use you in the days ahead. Bye-bye.